Hi there, Kerry here again with a new video for you on my channel. Now, to, I was going to do some dedicated single videos for each of the books I'm going to mention today. I was going to do all the research, get the graphics up, get the text up on the screen, but what the hell, I just thought I'd knock them all off in one go, just a, a free form from the top of my head review of these three books, which I, the last three that I've read, uh, all very different books, very different authors, topics, and so on. So first of all, we have A Master of Jin. Now this is by P. G. Lee Clark. I think the P stands for Fenderson. And the whole name is a, a non de plume or pseudonym for a uh, uh, respected historian. He uses this name um, when he's writing fiction. He's written um, several works now. Now, The Master of Jin is really a, a culmination of it, him working his way up to a full novel uh, set in this world. He wrote several novellas and short fiction set in this world. He's been fleshing it out slowly over those. And now he's gone all the way with the novel. Now the first uh, novella he wrote was called A Jin Die, Dies in Cairo, I think it was. Um, a, or a Dead Jin in Cairo, sorry. And that really introduced the character, the main character of this book, which is Fatma al Sharari. Don't make me say that name again. Okay. So we, she's just referred to as Fatma throughout the novel. Now she's a uh, uh, officer, an agent of the... Ministry of Encha Alchemy, Enchantments, and Supernatural Entities. It's kind of like a, a police force which handles supernatural events in the city of Cairo. Now, the Cairo of the short stories, now I better list all the short stories. It's the uh, Dead Jinn in uh, Cairo, there is the Angel of Al Khalili, and there is the Haunting of Tramcar 015. Now, these short novels are all set in the same universe as the uh, Master of Jinn. It's Cairo in the year 1912. It's not Cairo as we would have known it in our world in 1912 because 40-odd uh, years previously, a mysterious figure known as al Jahiz, um, some sort of mystic uh, person which nobody really could pin down his true identity, um, unleashed the forces of magic and supernatural entities back into the world, uh, previously only in legend and... Um, and me uh, distant memory, they all but turned out to be real, and um, they set up about transforming the world. Basically, the, um, the Egyptians were uh, managed to kick out the colonial oppressors, the British and the French. Um, they become like a superpower with the help of the Jin. Jin have uh, instituted a, a ra an industrial revolution using mechanical computers and robots and airships and all sorts of uh, steampunk type technology, I guess you could say. And this has made Egypt a powerful nation. Now, uh, in the uh, Dead Jinn in Cairo, Fatma has uh, like her first big um, adventure um, and it ends up escalating into something with really high stakes. And that kind of set things up. The Angel of Al Khalili is a little interlude. It's uh, a young girl goes to visit the entities known as angels which is some type of energy being which uh, encase themselves in mechanical suits in our world and she finds out exactly what it takes to deal with them. The, the Haunting of Tramcar 015 was a bit of a lighter tone, it's a more comedic. Introduces two characters which do show up in this novel. Um, they, like the title says, they, there's the aerial tram cars that run, go around wires around um, Cairo and a supernatural entity has uh, taken up residence in one of them and they um, basically have to go through a, a series of farcical events to try and um, get rid of it and it coincides with uh, some more social change in the alternate world of Cairo in 1912. Now the novel here starts uh, in 1912 again and it starts with a mass murder of a group of expats living in Egypt who have been uh, who belong to a uh, secret society type thing I don't know if it's how secret it was who basically wished to uncover the secrets of Al Jahiz and his uh, and have been collecting his material remains of his life his weapons his uh, books what have you um, and collecting them together and a um, mysterious caped and masked figure appears at one of their meetings and proceeds to kill them all. Um, Fatma is tasked with investigating this crime 
And soon it comes uh, word on the street that Alger has, has returned and he was the one responsible for the murders. And he's taking out some type of revenge and, some type, and trying to institute some type of class war in Cairo. Uh, Fatma gets um, a new partner called Hardia, who she thinks is a bit of a useless pipsqueak. Another woman who is unusual for the force, the, the ministry. Uh, there's only been a few female agents and Fatma is um, the one that's well most well known and has kind of tried to break the mold. She has been Western educated and she wears uh, Western clothes like suits and uh, tries to put on a, a fancy ear and she has a cane and what have you. Um, so that makes Fatma stick out in, from the crowd and um, she is well known. And anyway, and we start, first see her in this book, she's an undercover trying to, um, I think, recover a gin in a bottle. And she gets tasked with this uh, murder investigation and things escalate from there. And the reason I was mentioning the shorter works is, uh, who he wrote in the run up to this is that all of the characters and situations and um, nuances of the earlier short works all come into play in the novel. And like I said, things escalate, the stakes get really high. Um, it's really enjoyable. The world of Cairo, his alternate world, Cairo 1912. It's a really excellent creation. You feel the lived-in feeling of it, and there's different areas. There's the affluent areas, the, the slum areas, the poor people, the wealthy, um, and how the appearance of jinn and other supernatural creatures have integrated themselves into the uh, the real world. And, um, and, and they're, they're all noble creatures. They have vices, they have uh, foibles and uh, failures, and... Um, it all affects the people of Cairo. So that is the Master of Jinn. You know, my only uh, qualm about it really is that it, he really throws in the entire kitchen sink with this novel. I'm not sure how far he can go from here because everything's at stake and there is a massive blockbuster movie type ending to it. Um, it's widescreen carnage and destruction and um, yeah, that, all that type of thing. It, I just think he may have gone a little too far with this with the, uh, the, the Demon Norman, or whatever you want to call it, Demon, I've got that word wrong, never mind. The, the big ending is um, a little a little too much, and you've guessed the secret identity of the man claiming to be Al Jahiz before the, um, the characters seem to know it. It's quite, there's a couple of clues left throughout the text, and uh, if you're quick enough, you're you, you'll, you'll know who he is um, in reality before the end of this book. So that is A Master of Gin by P. G. Lee Clark. I enjoyed it. The world he created is excellent. Um, the supernatural aspects, the just the police procedural aspects, how that works in a world like this. It's quite fascinating. I hope he writes some more, but maybe just a, a simple procedural adventure um, without end of the world type states would probably be the way to go I think. So that's the Master of Gin. Next up, totally different thing, Grace Dent's book Hungry. Now Grace Dent is a bit of a media personality in the United Kingdom. I think I first heard of her in this book on the Savage Reads podcast where the uh, Simon Savage, the host there, recommended this book. Um, I didn't think much about it after that and then I stumbled across Grace Dent's um, podcast hosted by the Guardian newspaper. Um, she's also a restaurant and food critic for the Guardian so um, that's how she got that uh, job. Um, the podcast was really excellent. It was called Comfort Food. Um, every week she talked to another celebrity or famous figure about their lives and foods that they ate at times of when they need comfort or what they keep going back to and they have a more broad range of gin uh, discussion after that. So I, I ripped through the 12 episodes of that and we are waiting more. Anyway, in the meantime, I picked up her book, um, Hungry. Now this has really three threads running through to it. Um, it is a memoir, sort of autobiographical, and the, well, the first main part of it is her childhood. Um, she lived with in Carlisle with a quite tight-knit family and very limited horizons. And it just shows how um, life was changed when uh, discount stores and supermarkets opened in the uh, local area for the first time and how they went about 
uh, going mad, buying everything that they could find, uh, which brightened up their life from the uh, the supermarkets and what have you. The second thread really is about her relationship with her father. She discovers quite early on, she starts discovering that he has some secrets that he's been keeping from her and the rest of the family. Um, basically involves his life before his life with her mother. Um, so Grace is very close to her father and that really ties into how the book winds up. Um, the third main thread of it is about Grace's career. Um, from the age late teens onwards, she was getting into a media, uh, media studies, media um, position, writing for student newspapers, then magazines, and uh, eventually uh, more glossier magazines, Fleet Street, all that type of thing, until she got the job with a newspaper. Um, it just goes through her career and how she became the, uh, the figure that she is today. And there's, she's got a lot of stories to tell, a lot of stories of debauchery and um, the endless stream of money that was available back in the, the old days when you wanted to send people overseas to cover something. Um, the So the book uh, covers all that, and it keeps going back to her father. Uh, her father... Um, well, looking back, it's quite probably quite obvious. Start to suffer from uh, dementia at quite an early age, but everyone just passed it off. He couldn't get a they couldn't get a, a, a diagnosis of dementia, and so he just kind of stumbled on. And everyone in the family made allowances for it. And it wasn't until it was, he was too far gone, really, that um, they got an official um, diagnosis that he was dementia, and he had to go live in care. And um, it's quite sad, that part of it. Um, see, Grace tries to alter her entire life to try, try and accommodate her family's problems. And her mother, I believe, gets cancer as well. Um, and I think she dies, as uh, we tell, we're told that her mother died in the epilogue. Um, anyway, it is, a, despite all that downer stuff, it's a really interesting book. Um, you can see a little bit of yourself if you're around my age or younger about the, the, the childhood and what have you, although I'm living on the other side of the world, there's things that resonate with me. And so that is Grace Stent's Hungry. And lastly, but very much not least, this is John Safran's latest puff piece. Now, if you're not familiar with John Safran, he is a Australian, uh, what would you say? He was a TV presenter, host, um, radio host, um, and um, all sorts of things, all, all over the media, John Safran. And I've been a fan of his for many years now, since I first stumbled across him on 90s television. Um, he's a very distinctive Australian voice um, character. In, in all the media, he's the same. You can, you can automatically say it, tell it's him when he's on. Um, he's idiosyncratic, a little quirky. And um, anyway, I've been following him for, you know, it seems, feels like 20 years now. And he doesn't disappoint when he puts his mind to something he can uh, pull out a, a great result. And for a while there, he had a, a uh, podcast, which was of a uh, version of a radio show he did with Father Bob, which was a, he's an elderly priest, which he acted, they acted like a, a, a good comedy team routine almost. Um, and that's good to see Father Bob still alive and kicking and shows up in this book too. So, um, and... John Safran's probably one of the only authors or creators of books that I read or things that I see that I've actually met in, in uh, real life. I've actually shook, shook the hand of the man, so if that counts for anything, I know he's a, the real deal. Um, he came to Christchurch a few years ago um, promoting his previous book, What You Mean by Extremist, um, and he signed my copies of his books, which was very kind of his. So anyway, Puff Piece. Now this one is his investigation into the Philip Morris co company, the cigarette purveyors. Um, they are trying to reinvent themselves, saying that they're going to stop people from smoking. And the way they're going to do this is by make people buy uh, a device called the IQOS, um, which is a little heating element type thing, uh, which heats up these things that are very definitely not cigarettes, but they're calling heat sticks. 
and this book really investigates uh, Saffron's investigation um, as he gets further down the rabbit hole with Philip Morris Company um, and the way that they use double speak and twist the language and twist semantics and what have you to get around the fact that they're selling cigarettes still basically but just under another name. Um, they'd probably dispute this. They seem to be have their fingers in everything trying to um, uh, lobby politicians and councils and, and countries to change their laws and rules and um, and they seem they feel threatened by the vaping industry but at the same time they're supporting vaping um, laws liberalizing the laws for vaping because they see that isn't in way for their their heat sticks and IQOS and anyway like I said John Saffron has a very distinctive voice and when you read this book I hear it in his voice um, he's still the same man that I, I, I enjoyed uh, reading and listening to and seeing on television. You get a little bit of, but despite, this, beside the uh, the main thre uh, thread about Philip Morris and his investigation, you get a lot of John's life uh, um, and his friends and, and his, his his quirks and, and um, his self doubt and his. Um, is inherent Jewishness because he does make a point of bringing that up all the time. Um, yeah, there's all those little bits in the book which I really enjoyed as well as, well as the main thread. Now, my only disappointment with it really is that it kind of peters out. Um, the COVID 19 uh, pandemic comes up about uh, two thirds of the way through and it kind of puts a, a crimp in the where this book was going because uh, he, he was going to travel overseas perhaps, but of course that didn't happen. Um, so he has to question, he ends up basically questioning his morality versus that of Philip Morris. It's it's a good read, it's entertaining. Um, I read it in about three uh, sessions. Um, I recommend it to anyone who is probably already a John Saffron fan, and if you haven't read anything by him, uh, his previous books are uh, Murder in Mississippi and What Do You Mean by Extremists? The first one uh, basically recounts his adventures in the US when he uh, befriended a prisoner and tried to uh, get to the bottom of a, a certain crime and what do you do mean by extremists kind of brings up his adventures dealing with uh, various extremists and racists and what have you in Australia in the uh, at the height of the anti-Muslim uh, movements or whatever in the uh, earlier of this decade and um, or the last decade sorry and um, so that's great. So that's John Safran. I recommend him. Uh, so that's the video. I hope I haven't bored you too long. So today is actually, I have to check my date, uh, 13th of October 2021. It's been raining again. It was raining heavily all night. Uh, lots of wind. Hoping for some better weather soon. Um, things are happening at work, which I'm not very happy about. Um, not sure I'm going to enjoy going back into that environment tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Um, beyond that, I hope you've enjoyed these reviews. I'm sorry I didn't do all the full production number on all of them um, like I intended to, but um, that's three books out of the way now, so we can uh, clear the decks for new videos without me having nagging feelings that I should be doing something different. So that's all. So um, if you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual jazz. It's up to you. Have a good day.